Um, without further ado, I'd like to hand it over to Officer Joe Wolf, who's with our canine, our law enforcement division's canine training unit. And um, Joe, how are you this morning? I'm doing very well. Thanks for having me. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Joe Wolf. Uh, I'm, I'm a Florida Fish and Wildlife Officer here in the Tampa Bay area. And I've been employed by the agency for 23 years. I started with the Marine Patrol. And for the last 17 years, I've been in the canine unit. Currently, I'm one of three trainers throughout the state. And, and today I'm going to talk to you about our, our canine program and what we do with our dogs and how it's a little bit different than what mainstream law enforcement does with their dogs. Um, I'll take a second if I can wake him up. I'll get my partner here, uh, Canine Duke. He's my fourth canine partner um, to come up here. Come here, Duke. There he is. Come on, all the way up. And this is Duke. Duke is about 14 months old, and he's a Chesapeake Bay Retriever, and he's actually my second Ch Chesapeake Bay Retriever, and I got Duke in April of this year when my previous canine, uh, Chaos, was injured, so Duke is still in kind of training mode. Um, but but uh, we'll get the PowerPoint started and you can, this is a picture of me and Duke here um, where his puppy uh, you get a look of uh, what the bat I got I might see when we come towards them or in a search and rescue situation. Uh, next slide please. This is going to be a, a short video of um, our canine unit and the handlers and the dogs that, that um, we use in our program. about the history of the FWC canine program. I'm going to explain the breeds and selection we use uh, to choose a canine. And I'm also going to explain the three disciplines that FWC canine units perform. Next slide. I'll also display and explain some of the tools and commands we use to train an FWC canine. And I'll discuss the difference between the traditional canine program and our port inspections program. Next slide. Here is just a little historical background of our program. This is a photo from 2009. Um, <clears throat> next slide. Uh, the Fish and Wildlife Canine Program began in 1989. It was one of the first of its kind to be used for this type of work for fish and wildlife work. The program was started by the Old Florida Game and Freshwater Fish Commission. Um, originally, there were nine original canine teams. Currently, we have 12 traditional canine teams. In 2011, 
the program expanded to add five teams that specialize in detection work at the ports and shipping facilities. And what these canine teams are doing for us is they're working at places like FedEx, UPS, at the airports, and what they're looking for is a little more specialized. They're looking for non-indigenous species like the, like the uh, Burmese pythons and the tegu lizards and things like that coming in that we don't want to have in our state uh, because they're detrimental to the environment. And, what, and they also check for outgoing um, reptiles and fish and things like that that may uh, be, be shipped illegally to other states or other countries. So they do a pretty neat job as well. Um, this brought, with the addition of those five teams, it brought our canine program to 17 total teams throughout the state of Florida. Um, canine breeds and selection. Uh, the Fish and Wildlife uh, Canine Program utilizes only sport breed dogs. And by sport breed dogs, they are dogs um, that are hunting dogs such as Golden Retrievers, Labrador Retrievers, German Short Haired Pointers, just to name a few. These breeds were chosen due to their friendly nature and willingness to work. Uh, the dogs are easily trained and the sporting community has a good rapport with these breeds. So they're familiar with what the dogs do and that they won't be bit by them. Um, the Fish and Wildlife Canine Trainer will often travel the state and work with out-of-state partners to locate quality dogs. All of the FWC canines are donated to the agency, which is uh, significant. Uh, the dogs come from breeders, rescue centers, pounds, and private citizens. Okay. Uh, when they're donated, it saves the state and the agency um, thousands of dollars per dog. Other law enforcement agencies, such as your sheriff's departments or city police departments, they may spend up to $10,000 for, for a dog. That usually comes from overseas. We, we get ours for free. Um, the fish and wildlife trainers will look for certain traits with a dog, such as their ball drive and investigative behaviors. Once selected, a dog will be paired up with their handler, and together the team will work to complete a 10-week training program. And then they will train at least once, once a week for the rest of their career. Um, good question. What are FWC canines trained to do? Uh, the main thing we do is, is canine tracking or man tracking. Uh, this is a photo of m myself and my, my dog Chaos when I was training him. And this is a classic look of, of a tracking dog with their head down um, in the down position towards the ground. He's got a good cadence, a good pull, as you can see how my lead is taught and uh, his tail's wagging, so he's happy that he's out working. And that, those are one of the traits that we want in a good working dog. Next slide. Um, here's a quick video of my current canine Duke uh, during his training over this past summer. Uh, this is a track train training um, from my body cam. So you'll get to see what a live track looks like from my perspective. Oh my goodness, there's the bad guy. Good boy, that's him. Boy! Woo! Good boy! 
boy! Uh, the second thing we do with our dogs is wildlife detection. Just like your sheriff's departments or city police will work with um, their dogs to locate items such as uh, illegal drugs and things like that, we use ours for uh, fish and wildlife. Um, the traditional canine teams are trained to locate fish and wildlife that violators may have hidden in a boat compartment or in their vehicle or at a campsite. Um, the ability of a canine to smell is to smell approximately 40 times greater than people allows an officer to develop probable cause to do a search. Um, some of the things that the traditional canines locate through detection were deer, lobster, and reptiles, which are just a few of the species, depending on where they are in the state. Next, next slide. Um, here's an alligator that was located by Canine Chaos after approximately uh, three miles of track through the woods and swamp um, in Pasco County um, over the summer. And as you can see, the person uh, did not intend to harvest that. This is a photo of, of, of trainer Felix Calazzo and his canine partner. Roscoe. Uh, Roscoe located a, a hidden compartment on a can approximately 85 red grouper, snapper, and goliath. Uh, and, and probably some other species that was good illegal. Um, and this is uh, canine Pearson and her, her handler, um, Steve Stasco. And a snook that was in a, in a compartment uh, hidden that um, Pearson snook out. And the handler there, there's something here. And that snook will take in there. To conduct detection work, the lead will be changed from the correction collar to the debbie on the collar. That's the metal chain that the dog usually wears. The canine will then be given the command to find it. When the canine locates the target over, he will either sit or scratch as his final response, which is telling the camera, hey, it's right here. Um, our traditional canines do what we call a passive response where they sit, and the traditional or the uh, fork canine will do an aggressive alert, which they'll dig and scratch at the location of the uh, hide. Next slide. And the third thing we do with the traditional canines is uh, fish and wildlife canines. We're trying to locate and conduct article searches. Uh, the articles may be anything with human odor on it. And sometimes the articles are located as evidence from a crime, and sometimes the article is something a person may have lost while hiking or hunting. Uh, will be called in to locate that form sometimes. Next slide. Next slide. Um, here's a couple of photos. Uh, you can go back to that, to the photos. Oh. There we go. On the left side of your screen is canine Roscoe. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's um, a child and turd mother there, and when the dog locates an article, uh, he'll go into that down position and uh, put the article between their legs. And then on the right is uh, handler uh, Anthony Delator and canine Diesel with uh, two firearms that uh, were located by canine Diesel on um, a uh, illegal hunting expedition. Next slide. Okay. What? Yeah, go back one. When conducting an article search, the handler will work the canine either on lead or off lead. A snap collar is placed on the canine and he is given the command search. 
when the article is located, the canine will alert by laying down with the article between his paws, as you saw with uh, canine Roscoe. Uh, next, next slide is a short video of um, one of our handlers, Scott Wiggins, and his canine Chase. Uh, they're going to do a quick demonstration here of an article search, a typical article search. This is our starting drill. You'll snap collar here, you'll hear the snap. And off to work he goes. You can see the posture of the dog with his nose down, trying to sniff, sniff out if there's anything there. And what the handler does is he just guides the dog in the direction uh, to make sure that the whole area is cleared. Um, to verify whether or not there's something there. And through repetition, the dog learns a pretty good pattern how far uh, he needs to go to locate something. You see a good change of behavior right there. The head snap, and now the dog's in the scent cone. And now he's trying to locate that source. It looks like he's pretty much on it. And there he is. So you can see they've done a pretty good job of training together. Um, that the dog knows, hey, I, you know, I found it and I'll down on um, uh, stopping it and then rewarding. There's his reward. And that's for a job well done. And what they found there was a shotgun shell. And then at the play time. Next slide. Quite a few questions. Uh, Officer Joe, are there any breeds of dogs that aren't good as canine officer dogs? Um, I would say no. All dogs were actually bred to do some type of work. So it depends on what type of work you want the dog to do. Um, there are some dogs that don't have the, the drive or the fit that a working dog requires, um, but all dogs were bred to do some type of work. Okay, and how long does it usually take for a canine officer to earn their badge? Um, our program is about 10 weeks where we do all three of uh, track man tracking detection and article searches. And then from there, when the handler and canine go to the field, they'll continue training at least seven hours a week for the rest of their career. What's the biggest, what's the biggest dog that you have on the team and who's the oldest dog on the team? <laughs> Duke says he's the biggest. <laughs> Duke is probably the biggest dog we have on the team, and he's also the youngest dog we have on the team. Um, my last canine was probably the biggest as well, uh, but the oldest is um, Canine Fryer, and Fryer works up in the central. And Fryer is a black Labrador retriever, and Fryer is probably 11, 12 years old. Wow. Wow, that's quite old for a canine officer. And yeah, yeah. Uh, you did say that Duke, um, someone did ask uh, about Duke's age. Can you tell us again how old Duke is? Yeah, Duke is 14 months old, so he's just over a year old. And typically we don't start training dogs until they're a year and a half. So he, he, he took to it very young and he's doing very well. Okay, that's great. Uh, do any of the canine officers ever get sick? from um, the fish or wildlife that they may come in contact with? Um, it is possible. Uh, deer, deer especially uh, carry ticks, which could pass on very bad illnesses or diseases, sometimes fatal for the dog. So we, we do keep them treated and to protect them from that. And they're, they, they're vaccinated yearly. Uh, with all the vaccines that we can get for them. So they are protected, but yes, it is a possibility. 
Duke and my other two dogs at home actually uh, contracted kennel cough from my neighbor's dog. So he's just finishing up his antibiotics to get over that. So yes, they can get sick from time to time. Okay. He's got his sick leave earned, I hope. <laughs> can, um, can any of the canine officers sniff out animals that, uh, that are on the beach? So hurt animals or wildlife that might be um, stranded on the beach? Do any of those canine officers work there? Um, we, we do a lot of, um, um, but typically if, if you mean like whales or something like that, that are stranded, um, no, we're not going to locate that. Uh, uh, the dog will do uh, region site species. Okay. So <gasps> if they're in the key, they'll do certain fish lobster, stone crab, that type of thing. Okay, okay. Um, and how how fast do the canine officers run? Well, I'm probably the fastest and, and I'm one of the oldest. So, you know, um, we try to slow the dogs down. Um, slower is actually better because on a track, um, you want to find evidence along the way. And the slower you go, it gives the dog a better chance to locate that evidence. And when a canine officer retires, does he live with the uh, human officer he worked with, or, or where where does he go, or she go? Yeah, we we retire the dog to the handler and the handler's family, and they'll care for the dog uh, for until until the dog passes. And what's the, um, you, I think you said um, in terms of like the youngest age that they start is usually, um, can you tell us again how old a dog has to be to, to start training? Yeah, so typically we want our dogs to be about a year and a half old because at that, that age they're usually physically mature, they're stronger, and they can physically take on the, the rigorous um, uh, training and work that we do, uh, as well as mentally, their the training clicks and they're able to learn quicker. Uh, so about a year and a half is what we would look for, but there are special cases like you that will pick it up a little bit quicker at a younger age. Um, Officer Wolf, how, how long have you been working with the canine program and working with, with uh, canine officers? Um, about 17 years, and Duke is my fourth canine partner. Okay, and what's your favorite part of, of your job? What do you love most? Um, I love working the dog, particularly on tracking. Um, it just amazes me that after four dogs that uh, you could put them in an area, um, whether it be a field, a roadway, or the woods, and the dog will take you to somebody from where they were. And uh, it just, you know, to our eyes, we can't see what their nose is telling us, so we have to trust them. Well, can you speak a little bit more about that? Can you talk about their sense of smell versus our sense of smell? Yeah. So. A dog, a dog smells about 40 times greater, and what that means is when we walk into a pizza parlor, we smell pizza. That's how we identify it. A dog's sense of smell is so strong that when they walk into that pizza parlor, they have the ability to smell every ingredient that goes into making that pizza like it was in an individual box. It's, it's remarkable, isn't it? Um, yeah. and can you tell us a little bit about, um, there have been several questions asking about dogs' protection. Do they have a uh, bulletproof vest? Is there any concern about them being out and coming in contact with a dangerous animal? How do we protect the canine officers? We're typically the handler is their protection. Um, we do have 
uh, some handlers that have bulletproof vests for their dogs that were donated. But by the nature of our work, we're typically not in a situation where it's, you're going to have a lot of violent um, confrontations with people. Most people are out recreating or participating in a sport. So, so um, we've never had a, a dog injury due to somebody trying to injure them. So what we do is effective because of the heat and it actually hurt the dog because of the heat. So um, we would call for a sheriff's department canine that's trained uh, especially for our situation like that. Okay, and I have one last question. Does Duke live with you year round? Duke and he is a handful because he's He's young and he's very large. Duke is 80 pounds. Um, he's an 80 pound puppy. Um, but yeah, he works pretty, pretty much 24 7. <laughs> if a search and rescue or something happened, he could be called out. And that way we know the dog's rested and ready to go. Oops, I think we lost your audio at the end there. Well, Officer Wolf and Officer Canine Duke, we thank you so much uh, for your presentation today and teaching us about FWC's Law Enforcement's Canine Division. And take care. All right, thank you all.